Hi everyone, it's Terry. Today we're going to talk about the quilting designs that are built into your luminaire. Now, if you think about these designs, what they're used for are borders and, and quilting. So these can be on your sashing strips, but there's nothing that prevents you from using it for something else. So keep that in mind. If you want to make a table runner and you want to have a decorative stitch on the outside, and place an embroidery design on the inside. There's nothing that says that you can't do that. So let your creativity go wild. The first thing we'll do is we'll select a pattern. And I think that what I'd like to choose is this little rose pattern here. I like that because we have red thread in the machine. I have hooped up just a piece of stabilizer and a piece of muslin. When I'm trying to test something out, that's what I usually use. So you can use whatever you want, but I typically like to test things out. So when you select this design, we'll choose set. Now you'll notice that there are three measurements. The top measurement is for the length. And this is where you'll set the length of your design. Keep in mind that 100 millimeters is four inches. I'm wanting to hoop this in my nine and a half by nine and a half hoop. So I want to have at least two hoopings. So with that in mind, I'll go ahead and choose a number of like 300 and we'll say 320 and we'll choose set. The nine and a half by nine and a half hoop has a 240 by 240 millimeter area. So this should give us two hoopings. Now on the height, I just told you that I have to be within the 240 millimeters. So I'll go ahead and make this 220 and choose set. And this will be on the height. Now the next setting that I have is a setting for the width of the, the actual sashing strip itself. And what I mean by that, this is the height of this design. We'll use the 55 millimeters and we'll choose set. And we'll go ahead and choose next. When you choose next, you'll see this is going to require two hoopings. Now, if I want to go back and change it so that I make it a little bit larger, perhaps I want the length to be larger, I can do that. We'll go ahead and go with with this because it will give us two hoopings and it'll show us how everything works. So we need to save it to memory. You only have one option for saving to memory and that's on the machine. We'll save it to memory and choose OK. And you'll notice I've, I've gone through this several times. So I, I worked how to, to use this in the most efficient way. I'll go ahead and I'll select the design and you'll notice that because I need two hoopings, there is a design A and B. Those are for manual adjustments or manual hooping. I want to choose the automatic one where I'll use my snowman and align everything. So we'll choose it. And the first thing I notice, I have a background scan from what I scanned in last night. Typically when I'm just trying something out, I'll hoop up just stabilizer, no fabric. And I, if it's a light design like this, I haven't really wasted anything but stabilizer that I buy as yard goods anyway. So what I'll do is I need to go in and erase that. So I need to go to page 10 of my settings. And this is where I need to delete that background image and choose OK. Now we're ready to go back in and we want to place our design on the machine. But before we do that, let's choose set. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to select the connector and it's telling me to raise my presser foot. And we'll go on and select the connector and then what we're going to do is we'll stitch out this first design. So I'll turn this over to the head of the machine 
And you can see what I'll do is I'll put the presser foot down and press the green button to go. And if I was stitching this out on a quilt, I can tell you that what I would do is I would do a needle up, needle down, and I would pull up my thread because I am including my bobbin thread. My bobbin would be loaded with the same thread that I have on top. And the reason for that is I don't like to have unsightly knots on the back of my quilt and I don't want to uh, see the cut threads. I want to make sure they're secured. So I bury my threads. But th that is up to you whether you want to do that or not. You will notice that what I did is I marked my fabric with a, a line and I'll, I'll point to that with this ruler that I have. You can see the line right here and that's a horizontal line on my fabric. I would do that with some type of uh, chalk that will go away because I want to be able to line this up for my next hooping. So I, I need to have something to help me to line it up to stay straight on the fabric. Now obviously if you are working with something that you hit piece, you would need to mark whatever it is that you hit piece or, or you would fold it to make sure that you hoop it correctly. I'll pause the video and we'll come back when it finishes with this. Okay, I've completed the first section and you'll see what it says here. It says the embroidery is finished. Is it okay to connect to the next pattern? We'll choose okay. And now what we want to do is select the connector because this is the second half. So we'll choose the connector. Okay, you can see this is where it's going to connect. And I'll go ahead and choose OK. Now it's telling me that the carriage will move to keep my hands away. So I'll do that. And what it's doing is it's projecting the snowman. Let me zoom in so you can see it. So here's the snowman on the fabric right here. You can see it on the fabric. Let's look at the screen and see what it says. On the screen, what you see is affix the first embroidery position mark on the fabric, and then the carriage will move after this because it's going to rescan it again. I have a sticker that I used last night right here, and I'll place it down on the fabric. Let me go ahead and move the camera again so you can watch. And I'll try to keep my hands out of the way, and let's zoom in again back up so you can see it and one of the things that I want to try to do is I want to try to make sure that I line this up right on the mark and the reason for that is this is going to connect with my neck the end of the stitch and I feel like I have it in a good position right there so we'll zoom back out and let's look at the screen now what you see is it uh, the instruction is to go ahead and select scan. So we'll select scan and you can see that my needle is moving and then what you'll see on the screen is that it found that position and now it's asking for me to place the snowman for the next mark. So let's turn this back again. We'll zoom back in. And I'll go ahead and place my, my sticker down. And I'm trying to get it lined up so that I have it lined up correctly. And there we go. I think that's right. So we'll go ahead and follow the screen prompts. So we'll watch it. Choose scan. So it's recognizing this, and you can see that it's found it. It's using the camera to do this. And once it, it finds it, 
then it'll move into position and it's telling me do not remove these marks but rehoop the material so that the next pattern and the centers of the two marks are in the embroidery area. So I need to go back to my table and rehoop this and then we'll scan it again. You can see I have the positioning markers here. Now what we need to do is go back to the screen. Let's zoom back out and we'll read what it says. It says that we need to scan. So let's go ahead and scan. And it says make sure my levers down. Apparently I haven't done that. So now I'll choose scan. So it's recognizing. I'll let you see the first instance on the screen. So it's rescanning the hoop. And now it's looking for those positioning markers. And when it finds the marker, you can see it right here. And now it's looking for the next marker. We'll look under the, the machine. You can see that it's positioned over that marker. And then let's look back on the screen. And you can see that it's, it's found both markers. Now they've been re recognized. Read this where it says, remove the embroidery markers and embroider. We'll go ahead now and we will choose okay. Now it's ready to start sewing the next part. So back at the head of the machine, we'll put the needle down and we'll press go. Now you can see it's connecting in to the piece and, and I mean, it is dead into it. It couldn't be more perfect. So I'll zoom in so you can actually see some of it as it's sewing. Okay, our design just finished and it nailed both places. I mean, both in both instances, it has connected right at the end point and you'll get the message on the screen that your embroidery has finished. So now's the time to take it out of the hoop and look at it. I'll take it to the table so you can see it. Okay, here's our design. Where it connected was right here and then also right here. And if I didn't show it to you, you wouldn't probably even be able to tell where it connected. So you can see where I drew a line with a marker. I used a friction pen. I would not use that on something that I was quilting because this can reappear. What I would use is a chalk marker or one that is a wash away marker that is used for fabric. This allowed me to keep everything lined up. And I hope that this video has been helpful to you. If you liked my videos, please like and subscribe to YouTube. And you can find me on Facebook at Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire.